So some talk about technology uh, today. So that's something that many would mention when talking about education for the future. So uh, let's see if we have technology with us now today. Um, I thought we'd start with a bit of a test. If I could have uh, the second slide, please. Next one. So, I know that we're in a country where there are more smartphones than inhabitants, so I'm sure that there are smartphones at every table here. Uh, so I'd like to start by asking you what you know about Sweden, the country where I'm from. So please uh, enter this link into your browser and uh, enter a word or two, no, no large essays, you can submit uh, several words uh, if you want, one at a time. So we'll see if you um, have some knowledge about the country where I'm from. I'll give you a few seconds um, to jot this down and maybe in the meantime you could prepare to open that uh, browser. The most common answer I can tell you is IKEA. That's what most people, especially here in India, would say. And uh, quite a few years back when we had our first interactions with our Indian uh, partners, they came to Sweden and I wanted to do something nice cultural in the evening with them. And they would say, no, can you please bring us to IKEA? Now I know IKEA is in this country as well, so uh, we'll do something else during the evenings. So if you could, uh, let's see if, if we have this with us. Could you uh, refresh in the corner there and see? Oh, look, we're creating a word cloud. Abba, uh, some uh, people interested in, in music. Do we have any kids in the room? Maybe you know about Davici, yeah, the DJ, yeah, also from, from Sweden. It's pretty cold, yeah, it is cold. IKEA, meatballs, Nobel Prize. Bjornborg, maybe you know Slatan Ibrahimovic, some of you who like soccer, yeah. But I'm not here to talk about Sweden. That's not uh, why I'm in Bangalore. I'm here to talk about changing education. So can uh, I please have next slide? Is there a, a clicker that I could use? Maybe I don't have to ask you to change slides. So I. Uh, I cheated a bit uh, because I also entered a word cloud that I did with a group uh, a month ago. I didn't know if technology was with us. So it's, it's not that dissimilar. Thank you. Um, so changing education. Uh, and can you please get the video started? Education represents the hope for a better future, in all parts of society and in every corner of the world. It is a force so powerful that it can shape people's lives, transform societies, and change how we perceive the world that we live in. I believe that a gun has no power at all, because a gun can only kill, but a pen can give life. A pen can save life. If in our struggle, we receive the support of the youth of the world, then our cause can never fail. In fact, the United Nations considers education a human right. It is also a basic human instinct. We have always been curious, hungry for knowledge. We see technological and societal advancements at an unprecedented level, creating jobs that did not even exist 20 years ago. Today there are app developers, chief listening officers, and algae farmers. The list goes on, and surely children growing up today will have to master a world far different from ours. The coming generations must be prepared for a world that is in constant development, and be able to adapt to this unpredictable job market. At Kunskapsskolan, we equip our students with the tools to communicate, to think critically, and to work in teams. With several schools in different countries around the world, we provide the opportunity to understand different cultures and work beyond borders. But most importantly, we nurture curiosity and a hunger for knowledge so that our students can master change and be part of shaping the future that they want to see. We don't believe in a school where one size fits all. 
we realize each individual's full potential by allowing everyone to find and develop their unique set of skills. We are a school for every unique personality there is. We are Kunskapsskolan. We do not believe in a school where one size fits all. Kunskapsskolan means knowledge school. We started in Sweden almost 20 years ago with the basic starting point that people are different. We learn in different ways and at different paces. But how come most schools still look today like they did 100 years ago? Perhaps even more important, the world is changing at a really fast pace. But still, very few school systems are. How do we know that we equip our students with the skills required to master the challenges of tomorrow? Meet a couple of uh, young students, Joey and uh, Anna. They are uh, they're four years old today. They will uh, go to university around 2034. They will have their first child around 2044. They will retire sometime in the 2080s. They will be ready for work life sometime in the 2030s, late 2030s. So what skills will be required for the jobs that are available to them? The only thing we know that they will be very, very different from today. And how do we ensure that our school system are equipping them with the right things? So next question for you. We talk a lot about 21st century skills and how we can incorporate that in our education. But in your opinion, what are the most vital skills that we as educators at schools uh, are providing our students? Please uh, enter this into, maybe we can keep that a little bit longer so people have a chance to write it down. Um, and also, I, I would like to suggest that you have some discussion around the table uh, about this. What are the most important skills for the next generation? Maybe we can uh, start bringing up the slide, the, the web browser, to see if we can uh, start getting some uh, responses, creating a new word cloud. Oh, creativity. Yes. Let's see if we uh, give it a few more minutes, see if we can have some more. But so far, we have creativity, critical analysis, self-discipline, empathy, communication, teamwork, really important. Oh, yeah, empathy and creativity coming up as the, as the top ones here. Okay, one last refreshing and then uh, we'll, we'll continue. Yeah, so interesting, empathy as the, the top one. Can you go back to the presentation, please? I cheated a bit with this as well. This is something I did with the group uh, a month ago and empathy I think actually was no it, it, it was there as well but uh, in this case communication and creativity came up as the top ones at Kunskapsskolan we believe it's our responsibility to help our students develop these skills and we've defined six skills that we find particularly important for the students to develop. Learn to learn, including reflection, strategies, self-awareness. Cooperate, including communication, teamwork and management. Act globally, including openness, change of perspective and sustainability. Take action, 
planning, implementation, and responsibility. Be innovative, including curiosity, creativity, and problem solving. And then last, but definitely not least, live digitally, including digital understanding, digital use, and source criticism. These skills are not something that we just defined and, and put on a piece of paper. We have incorporated training of these skills in all of our learning materials at the schools. Uh, we also have a system where students can make their self-evaluation of how strong they are in the different skills and determine what areas where they need to train a bit extra. Uh, and this is not only for, stu for the students, it's of course also for the teachers. The teachers are the role models. This is for all. I believe strongly that in, in the world where we're living, we always uh, need to learn and improve what we do, talking about lifelong learning. And for teachers and school leaders, it's extra important to be role models and, and lead this journey. So I'd like you now to take a minute or two at the tables and discuss what you are doing in your everyday life to train any of these skills. So just have a, have a discussion around the tables and see what are the most important skills that you feel like you want to train. For me personally, I think the lived Digitally, and as, as a non-digital native, if I compare to my kids, for example, this is something that I need to train every day. But uh, just have a discussion uh, around and see what you think. Okay, I'll uh, continue a bit. Um, I mentioned that we have an educational uh, concept at Kunskapsskolan that was created 20 years ago when we started up. And I'm just going to give you a brief overview on how we are trying to do things in a different way. We call it the CAD program. And it's uh, what I started saying in, in the beginning was that I believe that the traditional school is not catering to the individual students. And our answer to that is personalization. And the CAD program is a coherent program to deliver that, where the student is always at the center. And all other resources and building blocks of the school have been designed to support that process. We don't start with a teacher. We don't start with the school premises, the schedule. We start with the student uh, that always has to be in the center. And teachers at our schools, they have different roles. They're, of course, subject experts, but the most important role would be the, um, the, uh, the one of a personal coach. So personal coaching is really the most important thing of what we're doing, where we have regular, every week, contact between a student and his or her own personal coach. The process of setting a goal, um, working on, on the strategy of reaching that goal is really what creates learners that uh, are in the driving seat of their own education. All students in our schools, they set goals. They set long-term goals, they set intermediate goals, that boils down to the short-term goals for what they need to do every week to be on track. And through the personal coaching that we have, we ensure that they are on track. And we also have uh, every day the real information about where the students are and where we need to put effort if someone is lagging behind. But it's also a possibility to help students um, do more than they thought possible and, and stretch their goals a bit. Time, it's a very essential resource of a school. As a student said earlier, I mean, how, how much time you have in school. So we've decided to use time in a different way. 
we arrange different types of learning sessions in different size groups. And it's to find the different sessions that suit the different types of learning that's going on, but it's also a way to free up teacher time for the one-to-one -one or the one-to-a-few students where a lot of learning is happening. And each student has their own personal timetable that may differ depending on where they need to put their priorities right now. So technology, it's of course an important resource for us as well. We have digital learning portals where all teaching and learning materials are. It's structured in a way to allow for personalization. You can reach it at any time you want. Uh, but technology for us is a way of empowering teachers, not replacing teachers. I've seen many examples of, of uh, schools that try to find a way replacing teachers with technology. I don't believe in that. Um, technology will change. It's already changing education. But I believe also that it would change the role of the teacher to be more of a coach and a guide. Because in this world, when information is at anyone's fingertips, fake or, or real information, the role of the teacher will be essential. Personal coaching, I also uh, already mentioned uh, a bit, so I don't think we need to go. I'm aware of the time there. Oh, what happened now? I'm going to show you a picture of how we see the teacher learner responsibility spectrum. The point of what we're trying to do is to create independent learners with the various teaching formats. We of course have the traditional lectures where information is given to students, but we put more emphasis on trying to take that knowledge and, and use it and understand it and work with it so that it really sticks. Uh, so to wrap up a bit, I uh, just wanted to give you some information about uh, our organization. We started in Sweden 20 years ago as an independent provider of education financed through uh, the national voucher system. Um, Today, we operate 36 schools in Sweden, about 13,000 students. And uh, we are active in six different countries today. Uh, apart from Sweden, we're here in uh, India. We have a school in Saudi Arabia. We work in the Netherlands, the UK, and the US. We talked earlier about the skills that we've defined. My favorite skill is act global. And I think in the world we live today, it's one of the most important. Um, helping students develop cross-cultural understanding uh, is something that we put lots of emphasis on. And we do that by what we call the CAD network with the schools where we have in these six different countries, student work a lot together. They work on joint projects, they Skype, they solve problems, they travel to meet. We also have lots of interaction between teachers of different countries and it's amazing, I would say, how much uh, we can learn from each other and uh, even though we're in so many different countries, the similarities between schools and education, teachers and students, there's so many more similarities than, than differences. Uh, and uh, having so many colleagues from all over the world, that's also, I think, the thing that makes my job the best in the world. And uh, being here in India, especially here in Bangalore today, uh, it's my favorite country, always very energizing and so excited to have all the students 
here as well. I think uh, this really gives us uh, hope for the next generation. So with that, I'd like to thank you uh, for your time today.